How's it be going, retro people? My name is Brad, this is Retro Style Spotlight, and this is your news, notes, history, and retro games to play for the week of July 12th, 2016. Last week's tutorial was a feature-specific tutorial on how to utilize Windows Search so that you can more easily sort and import a giant folder of games that you may need help sorting out a bit. If this is something you need help with, then the link to the tutorial will be in the description below. In ROM hacking and translation news, MSU-1 audio hacking has just taken a huge step forward. There is a system called the BS Satellaview that was released for the SNES in the 90s only in Japan. On that system were exclusive games that were only released in a limited fashion for the satellite-powered add-on. On this machine were remakes and odd still official sequels uh, non-canonically for the Legend of Zelda series. BS The Legend of Zelda was a 16-bit remake of the original and it played out a bit differently than its original counterpart. If you want to see the Link to the Past version in action, there is a link in the description below that will take you to the playlist on my channel for it, where I explain the Satella view more thoroughly and you can see the game in action. Well finally, both MSU1 and BS The Legend of Zelda have been mashed together. The original airings of these games were accompanied by audio plays that told more of the story and gave the player a lot more of an atmospheric feel. Thought to have been lost to the ages, MSU1 has finally brought these back to the game and someone has created a fan dub of the original recordings. This can be played on an emulator or on a real console through something like an EverDrive, though expect some odd behavior if you choose the real deal. This is quite honestly retro video game restoration and preservation at its finest. If you've been living under a rock and have never heard of Destiny, it's a very popular not MMO, but secretly an MMO, that came out on consoles a few years ago made by Bungie, the studio that originally created Halo. It's super popular and now someone has demade the game into a side-scrolling platformer? I've covered demakes in the past, but this is odd and interesting. Called Project Tiger and fully playable on PC or Mac, this game takes a snippet of the game where you can explore the world, fight some enemies, and all before taking on a boss. Stuff like this is interesting, and if you enjoy Destiny, but also love retro gaming goodness, give this one a play and let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. LucasArts was once known for creating amazing point-and-click adventures. With amazing stories, awesome music, witty writing, and great graphics, these were awesome games. What if I told you that they created an MMO 30 years ago? If this is considered a graphical MMO, then this obviously predates the original Neverwinter and may be considered the first graphical MMO ever replacing Neverwinter in that category. Called Habitat, it is now considered open source and available to download, play, and develop if you so desire. Played on a Commodore 64 and using dial-up pay-by-the-hour internet, you could log in and play in this world with others just like the original Neverwinter. This was even played on a service called Q-Link or Quantum Link, later sold and rebranded as AOL, which is also where the original Neverwinter was played ironically. There are certainly a lot of parallels between these two games here. Only running for about two years, ending its service in 1988, the game was then called Club Karibe and was sold to Fujitsu for the Japanese market. MADE, or MADE, the company behind the restoration, contacted Fujitsu to get their permission and is in the process of contacting AOL, which holds a Q-Link's IP. It is 30 year old code and IP, so chances are this is going to be a lot harder than you would assume. Maid's co-founder, Alex Handy, insists the project is important to help understand the history of a popular gaming genre. A lot of the things that we see in modern MMORPGs originated in Habitat, Handy said in 2014. The fact that people love cosmetic items, the fact that if you change things in the world, the user base will freak out, they created the ability to murder people in the game. There was a disease, there were quests, it's extremely valuable for us to preserve the history of those things, and this is doing that. This month in 1990, Nintendo of America publishes Final Fantasy for the Nintendo Entertainment System in North America. Final Fantasy is a fantasy RPG developed and published by Square in 1987. It is the first game in Square's Final Fantasy series created by Hironobu Sakaguchi. Originally released for the NES, Final Fantasy was remade for several video game consoles and is frequently packaged with Final Fantasy II in video game collections. The story follows four youths called the Light Warriors who each carry one of their world's four elemental orbs which have been darkened by the four elemental fiends. Together, they quest to defeat these evil forces 
restore light to the orbs, and save their world. The game was originally going to be called Fighting Fantasy, but the name was changed to Final Fantasy when the development team discovered Fighting Fantasy was the title of a series of single-player roleplay gamebooks. Square also believed that the game would be the last title they ever released as the company faced bankruptcy. Instead, the game was a great commercial success, received generally positive reviews, and spawned many successful sequels and supplementary titles in the form of the Final Fantasy series. The original is now regarded as one of the most influential and successful role-playing games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, playing a major role in popularizing the genre. By March 2013, all versions of Final Fantasy had sold a combined total of 2 million copies worldwide. So that was Retro Style Spotlight for the week of July 12th, 2016. All the relevant links to everything you heard in this edition of RSS will be in the description below. Remember, you can sign up for a Launchbox Forum account to talk with us over there. If Launchbox has given you a beautiful library of games, then why not purchase a premium license of Launchbox for $20 to access Big Box, which is a controller and couch-oriented version of Launchbox. We also have our Launchbox Games database now available for users to contribute to. If you have a few favorite games that are lacking in metadata or media, head on over to the games page on the database and make your desired edits. Jason and I have a lot planned for our community, so if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we're doing a tutorial video every Friday and more entertainment type shows like this in the future. Let us know what you think of RSS and any feedback you may have on it. My name is Brad, the link to my channel is in the description below, and remember freaks and geeks to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!